Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Praise God. I want to talk about something touching heritage. And inheritance. Guru Ginalea. When God appeared to Abraham. He told him, leave your people. Get thee out of thy country. From thy kindred. And from thy father's house. And to a land that I will show you. In fact, the Amplified says, Amplified, why you he was in Haran. And the next verse in the Amplified verse 2. He says, and I will make you a great nation. I will bless you abundantly. With abundant increase of favors. And make your name great. Famous and distinguished. And you will be a blessing. And in the Amplified, he says, dispensing good to others. He says, and I will bless those who bless you. That means I will make happy those that make you happy. And he says, and I will cut him the curses you. And he says, with all your kindred, you shall be blessed. But God tells Abraham that it's for your advantage. He told him it's for your advantage that you're living your own. He told him it's for your advantage. He tells him it's for your advantage that to go. So, he's separated from his own people. And what people don't understand with this scripture is that in his father's house there was food. No champion. In his father's house, the there was establishment. No kigete In his father's house, the one. there was a comfort. No of life. No yacht. There was a status of living. And no there was a heritage and a reputation. No there there was a story. No and history. That would meet every need that he had. He was not lacking. Abraham's father had enough to feed him and his family. And the Bible tells him he is separated from his father and family. And he goes to a land where God had to show him. He gets there, builds an altar unto God, and Canaan means lowly land. So God gets Abraham into a lowly land, a desolate place, an abandoned place, and tell them begin from there. Somebody shout hallelujah. And Abraham wrote a story. And a famine hits him in one day in the land God had called him. And a famine hits them. And Abraham had to go to Egypt. He left the altar of Bethel. And went to Egypt. When he reached there, he had to tell his wife, 
Tell them that you're my sister. Why you give me an auto watch you watch again and until I'm meru? Because of your beauty, if you say you're my wife, so believe me, God is why you need down at that tomb. And a lot happened there. See them magloti me kono. And God took Abraham out of Egypt. Luba kwa ni vura imki lobo Egypt tu chwa luka mukeme. Because it was not originally God's plan for Abraham to go to Egypt. Biya no pay you palo ba ni vura imo beri lobo Egypt. But there was a famine. And no kechi kono. And Egypt was the source of food. No miracham. So it was acceptable for God to lead him even while he was there. Uno be ye to tu ali luba hotel and karam anti kenyuni. But to deal with famine, make a make a catch in the land where God has sent you for an inheritance. is a very confusing state of life. Somebody shout hallelujah. But even with the famine in that land, Abraham never doubted. That God had sent him in that land. Some people think that when God sends you to a place and says that's where I will bless you, they think they're just going to land and drones are going to come and capture them and newspapers are going to come and they are going to have a grand entrance with angels singing you understand? But a man found the ground to till. He met a famine in the land. He met some unfriendly folk in the land. Because it originally belonged to some people. And God tells him this is for an inheritance. But you see, inheritance has to be seen by the Spirit. It is not something you see with your physical eyes. It is something your spirit has to see. Inheritance is a vision. It is not just a physical attribute of a thing. Somebody shout hallelujah. So when we talk about inheritance, we don't talk about the physical things you take. We talk about the name that gives you the right to take. Because if you're not that man's child, it doesn't matter how many things he has. Carry no right to a thing. Some of us take that power for granted. Because we don't understand the glory of identity that precedes it. Without identity, you carry no inheritance. For everyone that bequeaths must name. And in that name is an identity. So what Abraham had to understand was that by separating him from his own family and taking him to a land that he knew not, God was giving him an identity. Because for so many years he was walking under the shadows of terror, the father. And the Hebrew meaning for the word terror means delay. No wonder at 75 he was still in his own father's house. 75. He was still living in his father's house. Because today in Africa, if you're 18, they chase you out. In Africa, Uganda, can't get you out of the You go. Go. You yourself a hut. You yourself a house. And build yourself something. Abraham was 75. That is so strange for Uganda. He is a part of 12 board down in Uganda. To live in your father's house at 75 years. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
the inheritances are defined by identity. And Abraham would not have discovered himself if he had not left his father's house. That's why God told him it was for his advantage. When the children of Israel were told by God, he gave them a solemn promise, a golden promise. He told them, I'm going to take you to a land flowing with milk and honey. Whatever that meant. They had an expectation of what they were going to find in that land. So they sent spies there. The things they saw. They came back and said, We are dead. There is no life there. The Bible says they gave a false report of the land. They saw giants. They saw failure. They saw disappointment. They saw frustration. They looked at every negative. But they did not understand that for God to give an inheritance, you must receive the vision of it. If you don't have the vision of your inheritance, your physical eye can take you off God's way Ask your neighbor, what do you see? Somebody shout hallelujah. Ask hallelujah. your neighbor again, what do you see? Joshua and Caleb go to the same land. And remember, the Bible says the people that gave a false report. The Bible says, and the ground opened its mouth and swallowed them. The power that opens the ground and swallows it means even the land could testify that this man had misrepresented the vision of God, catching the power of inheritance. When you get a wrong vision of inheritance, the ground will swallow you. The ground will swallow you. The land swallows you. Because your blessing touches the land. When God faced Cain when he had killed Abel, he told him, you're cast from the ground that opened its mouth to take the blood of your brother. And because of that, today, the land will not yield forth its fruit and its strength to you. When you till the ground, the ground will reject you. It's possible to use all your strength to plant in a ground and the land rejects you. There are some people to whom lands respond to. And there are some people whom lands don't. Whom nations can't. When they could not see the land of inheritance, even the land from where they came from swallowed them. Because they had set themselves against the spiritual law of exchange. They had killed the glory of their life. For any land anywhere to respond to them. Because if you don't have the vision of your inheritance. You will never prosper anywhere. Even the land your own rejects you. Tells you you don't belong to you. And if you rejecting where God has sent you, then you don't belong here either. Some people don't know the power of the ground. When God told Cain that when you till the ground, it will not yield its strength. The Bible says he shall be a fugitive 
Baby, what he is beyond and a vagabond on the earth. And then he says, This is a heavy punishment for me. Baby, what you obey your term at this period? For if I become a vagabond, you know, when you become a beggar, it means you're rejected. And thank God that the scriptures have told us the rejection comes by ignorance. For my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. What you don't know puts rejection on you. Nobody is born with a spirit of rejection. But you can attract it by ignorance. That is why he sent his word. That when you get to know the word, you do not walk in ignorance. And because there is no ignorance, you will never be denied in the name of Jesus Christ. I can say that for every believer. But I can't say that for every man in the earth. Because not all men know this truth. Who understands what I'm saying? Cain told God, You have driven me out from the face of the earth. I shall be as a fugitive and a vagabond. And if men fight me, they will kill me. That means if the land rejects you, you even attract the spirit of death. Baby, you are a twin metal, I it, death can look for a man. God had to put a hedge of protection on him. Because if it was not, he would die. If a land rejects you, you can even die. This is scripture. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when Joshua and Caleb go to the same land, they see the vision of what God saw. And they say, we can possess this thing. We can take over this thing. But what did the other men see? They saw giants. The devil cast the wrong vision on their eyes. So the Bible says, we saw the giants, the Be, sons of Enoch, the Bible, which come of the giants. And listen, the scripture says, and we were in our own sight. In our own vision. In our own vision. Ourselves. As grasshoppers. And so are we. In their sight. Did you understand that? Because we saw ourselves as grasshoppers. They also saw us as grasshoppers. When you see yourself poor, people see you as poor. When you see yourself weak, people see you as weak. See you as weak. That is why some people don't walk in favor. Because they see themselves rejected. No. See yourself favorite. See yourself as one which deserves greater. Believe in who you are. When you see yourself a certain way, the world will see you a certain way. It doesn't matter where you are. There are poor men in the richest nation. And there are richest men in the poorest nation. It's not where you are. It's what you see. It's not where you are. It's what you see. Tell them again, it's not where you are. It's what you see. He says we were in our own sight. It began with them. They saw it. They saw it. That they were grasshoppers. And when a man sees himself as a grasshopper, he releases a spirit in the atmosphere that goes to the giant. And the giant looks at him and looks like a grasshopper. When they call you for a job interview, how do you go? I remember in my second bank job, and this guy says, we're going to hire you as a branch manager. And the branch bank is struggling a bit. He says, can you raise 
Wati twero nongo. Six billion. Billion abiti. Give me a very high target. Ono tiki wama mala dada. To intimidate me. Mev me avora. I told him that's little. Wati oni tiri marat. You say six. Tell him that's very little. He says I'll double it. I said I'll double it. What? What? Ne? I be dodo. Ha ha! He laughs. Onyera. He says I like this guy. What? Eh? Jala mori jala. Give me the job. Amori chikiri. And in one year I doubled it. What? Eh? La dodo. But every time I used to enter that office. Car muka na dodo office muka. I used to tell myself I attract money. No, what? I want you to come. I attract wealth. I want you to live. Where Matt is blessed. The blessing of God is over me. From Palabati, come on. The richest can only pack here. Lord, you're a good dude. I can't think of a bank. It's my branch. Some a bank man. Rabba kala 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 kala. Rika yelebo. La blessing business started to work in. Biya chara chao biro. My bosses called me one day and said, La diro luwa wachi. We're disturbed that the branch is growing. You're not doing too much. Bang itika niyato tuwal. And I told him I'm doing. You just don't see. I want to take a team on a party. No, 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 no. I'm selling, but my own way. A team on a yona. Hallelujah. Amen. Then I left for leave. Tell where are you? Then they call me again and say, Can you come back? Can you order to watch a duke? I tell him no. I'm busy. I'm going to stop God. Go. What did you ask? Bottle. I wrote my resignation. I show you a signing. I want to take this. Why? Because I saw something. Ask your neighbor, what do you see? What you see is your inheritance. Because it's your identity. Somebody shout hallelujah. You cannot see inheritance if you don't know who you are. What are you made of? What is inside your system? What is in your DNA? What is in your spirit? What is on your life? If you believe that you're going to be swallowed, you will see. Somebody shout hallelujah. Famines will come. They came in the days of Abraham. But he never shouted that there was an inheritance there. In Genesis 26, the same famine came. And it came in the generation of Isaac. Same thing that affected his father. And what did God tell him? He says there was a famine in the land and besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And also... That belly, we see Isaac going to a Philistine. In any cell, I'll take your city. And when he goes in a Philistine, Carlo, the Carlo. same spirit that followed his father follows him. Do not tell no Lubuko, when no Lubuko. He finds himself telling his wife, Tell them you're my sister. Oh, why you get down on the water? You look like a And some men don't understand that. Cho, who can the big young and only now this is for men. And if I chore, but you're win. When you don't know where to go, Papa, you come on your cherry, yeah. When a famine comes, you expose your wife. You don't Same thing that happened to Abraham. Like they hit on Sarah. Go Sarah. In Isaac's day. They hit on his wife. He exposed her. When you're down at here, when you're a married woman, and another man hits on you, and you have vows, understand that that's another spirit. Because why doesn't it see you crown? Why can't it see the anointing of a wife on you? Why does it see you like another woman? But the Bible says, God tells him, the Lord appeared to him in verse 2. And told him, your father went to Egypt, don't go to Egypt. Don't go to Egypt. And he tells him, live in the land which I will tell you. Dwell temporarily in that land. And I'll be with you. I'll favor you with blessings. To you and your descendants, I'll give these lands that I'll perform the oath. And I will multiply your descendants. I'll give to your posterity all these lands and kingdoms. 
our money came and got money. And shall all the nations be blessed. By him. Now, what God is trying to tell this man here is, even where you're going, one day to be but don't lose the vision of what I promised your father. You understand what I'm saying? He's trying to tell him, don't lose the vision of what I told Abraham. He brings back the Abrahamic promise to the because it's of the famine. I don't want you to lose the bigger picture. That your inheritance is not just where you're going for a temporary time because of famine. Your inheritance is for the whole world because I gave Abraham the world. That world is yours. So don't look to some of those short fixes at permanent solutions. Yes, God can call you in a place and things go south. But don't lose the bigger picture. When you became born again, you did not inherit one land. The whole world became you. Hey, tell your neighbor that the whole world is mine. I have legal right to every ground in the world. He told us through our father that every place you stay, you shall possess. That's the attitude. And that's the thing God is trying to tell us. That it depends on what you see when you go in the land. When you enter Gulu, what do you see? This crusade we are doing, it's a vision. We have to see it. We had to see that. It was One bishop said, I've been here for 20 years. Bishop, why you can you appear at you? And then a crusade. I've never seen this. Put pan a crusade machalo in me. But we have to see. What men have never seen. Somebody said hallelujah. That's why now I'm provoking you to expand your vision. Start to see what men have not seen. What ear has not heard. And has not entered into the heart of men. You might have famine sometimes. You might wake up and the finances are left to And things are shaking left right and center. But never lose the vision of who you are. And what you have inherited in Christ. The Bible says we are joint heirs with Christ. Joint heirs with Christ. And yet he's the fullness that fills us all things. <laughs> Glory to God. It means that everywhere you go, you have a chance. The world is ours. Tell your neighbor, this world is mine. Everywhere I go, the ground will favor me. Everywhere I go, the land will yield its substance to me. It will bring forth its fruit. I will never beg in any place. I will never be a fugitive in any place. I will never be rejected in any place. In everywhere that I will go, I will be favored. In every place I will step, the place of God will surround me. The lines will fall in place. And places. I have a godly heritage. My past will drop with greatness. Whatever I plant on the ground, it shall grow. If I want to build a hospital, it shall come out of the ground. If I want to build a school, it shall come out of the ground. If I want to build a university, it shall come out of the ground. If I build a secondary school, it shall come out of the ground. If I want to build a vocation, it shall come out of the ground. If I want to build a city, it shall come out of the ground. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above that which you dare to ask the offspring. According to the working power that walketh in us. I'm talking to a dreamer now. I'm talking to a dreamer now. I'm talking to a dreamer now. I said I'm talking to a dreamer now. That's our DNA. It goes down to two generations. Enters Jacob. Gets out of Jacob. Enters Joseph. And he goes as a slave boy. Enters Egypt. He was always a solution. And he becomes the solution. Of the solution Jesus. That's the DNA. He went as a slave. Entered prison as a slave. Served as a slave. And a dreamt a dream. 
that only he could interpret. Generations later, generations later, when famine hit the world including Egypt, God had to make sure that the Jew would walk to a Jew for food. Not an Egyptian. And his brothers leave where they're coming from. And they come to Joseph. Their own brother. That's why I'm saying in every place. God will send men who speak your language. To respond to the vision God has placed on your life. Even if you leave this place and go to Germany. And say, Rabba Kotele Kaya. They somebody who will connect. Even if you leave this place and go to Russia. And cancel the language. When you open your mouth and say, Rabba Kala Bayele Somebody will connect. There are men come standing here, don't speak at all. But there is a language they always speak. And an actually person connect. Why? Because we have an inheritance that is bigger than any language, any tribe, any color, any community. It doesn't matter how backward. Wherever we go, we bring light. When I understood that, I also went into foreign lands and started putting feet there. Because the world is ours. Glory to God. I say the world is ours. Glory to God. You're not poor. He said it, you're not poor. And that is true. And before we know that, the Jew was governor. And when famine hit, that day it did not hit Egypt. No, Pharaoh dreamt for Egypt. Joseph saw for the world. When he stored up, he did not store for Egypt. He would not have had enough for the rest of the nation. But the man with the spirit, Pharaoh says, for I see no man in whom the spirit, spirit. And when Joseph went down, God gave him a vision and told him, this is your opportunity. It's famine. It's your opportunity. Your fathers ran away from it. But for you it's an inheritance. And to, and it's an opportunity and to lead the Jew. And the Bible says, and when famine came, it hit the whole world. But Joseph fed the whole world for seven years. Jews came. Every nation came. And Egypt had enough. And in scripture it is clear that when some of that food was sold, Egypt became more wealthy. It became wealthy in the time of famine. Because it had what the whole world did not have. Yet had more than enough for its own. So a man created abundance in the time of famine because of a certain DNA. It doesn't matter whether you are born in Peche or Gulu or from the deepest places of this world, the poorest you can ever be, when you know you God a certain way. Men will dig roads to find you. I want you to raise your voice as a dreamer. Thank God for the inheritance you have in Jesus. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
hear what I'm saying? Oh, that Baba Yere Bo, he shall come to my right hand. He shall come to my right hand. Oh, I am a man. And all I do is shall prosper. in everything you touch. Start to receive it now in the name of Jesus. Things will come to your rising. Gentiles will come to your light. Strangers will serve you. This world is yours. Wherever you will go, wherever you will go, doors will open for you. Windows will open for you. Wherever you will go, things will shift to your direction. The wind of the Spirit will move you. Wherever you go, everything will be working for your good. I declare that in every place you will come, you will move faster. Faster than anybody you meet. I say in every place you step, you will move faster than those you have found there. You can take it. It is yours. To the glory of God, in Jesus' mighty name, give the Lord a man of the praise. Hallelujah. And if you're here, and you've never given your life to Christ, and you've had this message, and you feel you want to walk in this promise, it's by Christ. Repeat this words after me, fellow Jesus. I've heard your gospel. Tonight, the woman ten. My shoes. Ayero. Give you my heart. Tonight. I choose to receive you as my Lord and Savior. I am born again. I receive you now. Change my life. Change my story. Change everything about me. tonight I have taken you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Sonero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 
1-800-242-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest. Thank you.